Hi everybody, it's KJ from Metro Hobbies and today I wanted to talk to you about Metal Earth. Metal Earth is a metal laser cut kit. So um, if you're a modeler, you might be familiar with the fact that it's very much like photo etch. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. Um, essentially, um, so here's an example of Metal Earth that you can actually see, hopefully, through the clear there, that you've got some laser cut out flat parts. What you do is then you fold them and you put them together and you build 3D models like I have in front of me. The one that I've just brought up here, this is your most basic type and where I'd suggest that you would start. Um, here it's just the Empire State Building, but the reason why I chose it is because there's no curves in it. There's no color on it, so you don't have to worry about making sure it doesn't scratch. I mean, you wouldn't want it to scratch anyway, but you ha don't have to pay extra care to it. Um, so it's for all straight uh, lines, so it's very easy to get into position and that's where I'd suggest somebody starts. They can actually then increase in complication. So there's a range called the Iconics. Um, there are others that aren't the Iconics. Then they have curves going on. So here you're going to have to, when you're bending the metal into shape to take the form so you can build the 3D models, you're going to need to think about how am I going to bend this. And so I will talk about how you bend that later. But this is your next level. This is an example of one that is both curved and coloured. This also has curves in it that um, you'll need to deal with. So that would be sort of something you might graduate to. After you... <laughs> After you um, get from there, you might want to start adding colour. Um, the colours really start to make it pop. Um, I've chosen Darth Vader here, but curves and colour. This is when you're going to start to think about using different tools to make sure that you still keep the colour in place because the colour can scratch. And the, a colour um, scratching is going to show up more than if you made a, a, a slight uh, mark on the, on the, uh, the, the plain metal. So that's a, when you, you get to your, your next level. Now, the ultimate level. Um, once you've done a few of these, is um, what's called the Moo models. The Moo models, a lot of what they, they have done are the transformers. This is one here. Um, I've got one here. This is the size of the box to give you an illustration. Um, this is significantly bigger, as you can see, compared to the other ones, and there's a reason for it. One of these is like building 10 of these. So the amount of metal that's in here would compose of how much metal is just in Optimus Prime's arm. Um, it is incredibly um, satisfying to be able to build something like this. And so I want to show everyone how they can get started in Metal Earth, um, what tools you might require, um, and how, you, uh, how you'd actually go about doing the folding. And so you can get started and build something like this yourself. So you can go from doing your, your basic silver versions, adding some curves, adding some color, and then building something like this. Okay, so let's take a look at the tools. Okay, so what tools are you going to need? Um, basically, you're going to need to something to cut it out. Now, um, Whatever you choose, I use a basic side cutter, it will eventually blunt over time. So don't use your fancy side cutters that you get for your plastic model kits. You just need um, a basic type. Um, so uh, the one would be the, there's a God Hands one for about $17. And also there's one that's about um, the XLs do a nice one as well. It, it has actually lasted me a number of kits without blunting too much. Um, that's what you'll need to cut it out. To even up the sides, because there will be the little um, nubs at the end of the, um, on, the on the model there, so it's what you'd call the gate, I use Tamiya's diamond file. Um, and I just sand that back to make it nice and smooth um, so you don't have any ungainly little um, edges on your, on your model. Uh, and then you come down to what you're going to need to, to fold it. So the first tool I have here, this is actually what I would use to put it together. It has little tabs that you need to twist and fold. Um, these are long, so they can get into difficult, hard to reach places. So you, you can grab the, tap, the, the tip and then twist it. I have a shorter version um, for obvious reasons. You don't always need the long version. Uh, this one is the one you probably use the most when you're constructing it because it is what I should point out, which is really important with these pliers, is that they're actually smooth. They're not serrated. They're not the same pliers that you get out of your garage. These are designed specifically for handling metal so it doesn't scratch the metal. Um, this one is a f uh, flat nose plier, a uh, smooth premium flat nose plier by XL. Um, I use this to, to bend um, the, the metal over or to bend it this way. And sometimes you're gonna need to do it gradually, but I'll show you more of that later. But that's the main one that you're gonna use. 
Uh, sometimes you do need to get in to really awkward sp spaces that you can't get the pliers into and um, that you need to position different um, sheets of the metal into position and I would use tweezers for that. So I have these flat tweezers so they don't spike, the nice rounded edge, these are trumpeters tweezers. Um, I do, if I need to get into a curved space, so I need to get around a bit of metal that's already positioned in place, then I'll use these. Now these are curved, they do have a bit of a, an edge on them so you just need to be careful but ultimately if you're going to be using them, they're going to be using them in behind the model. So any mark you do make, you won't actually see on your finished product. So these are the, the basic tools. It is nice to have a, a mat to put it on. You're not actually going to have to cut onto the mat, but it is nice to have one to lay out your parts, but it's not absolutely necessary. Um, something I will give you um, a tip with, if you get some latex gloves, you notice I've got these little... Um, latex finger gloves. These actually come with the Moo models. All Moo models have a set of these in them so that when you're actually handling your model, you don't mark it. It also makes it easier to grip because it's got a, a little bit of rubber on there. Um, I Latex gloves or these ones is what I would suggest using. It does make it a hell of a lot easier to use. You actually need it on the hand that you're holding the parts with. And they're the basic tools. So let's get um, one out and see what it's like when you start. So I have opened up Morlock's Land Speeder, which comes from the Han Solo Star Wars film. And I'm going to just show you what a basic set actually comes with. So here is my laser cut um, sheet. I'm going to have three of them. So just three of these guys. You'll see that there's some etching on the metal. So like photo etch, if you're familiar with it. And then you have your instructions. And your instructions are going to tell you all the basic things. It's going to give you the, the numbers as to where everything is located. So you'll need to reference back to that. It's also going to have a key as to how you will fold things, um, whether it's going to be a twist or not. So I'm going to start and just show you a basic how to cut it out of its, uh, how to cut, cut it out of the sheet, the part by part. Let's have a look. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out this piece here. Um, so it's very much like a model kit where you have like a little gate, except that it's not a gate because it's a laser cut model. You just get your little side cutters in there. Just give it a nice little clip. You don't need to get too close to it because we're going to tidy that up with the file. In fact, if you, the further you are away from it, the better because you're less likely to actually damage your metal. There are some other tools. I'm using side cutters, like I said, but you can get uh, photo etch scissors, which will allow you to get into those places a little bit easier than what I did just then. So then now you have your piece. There's a little bit of extra there. So just give it a little twist, pops out. This is your piece. It's nice and shiny. I'm trying as my best to use this to handle it rather than my actual hands. The next thing we need to do is we've got some little edges so what we need to do is take our diamond file. This is our diamond file, which is very nice for sanding down metal. And that just cleans up any little notches. You can use the curved end. Sometimes there's a, a little bit of a curved part. Here we go. And obviously you're filing metal, so you don't want to um, be doing this and then not clean up after yourself. So do it on a table somewhere um, so that you can actually get all the little metal fibers that you've just sanded down. So once you've cleaned up the edges, so that wasn't too bad. Once you've cleaned up the edges, you're now going to need to fold the item. So as I was saying before, nice pliers. I would try and start with the longest edge first. All right, so we're going to just do this in sections. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. I'm going to do this in sections because I've just chosen to have my pliers. And this is probably the, um, if you're just starting out and you're not knowing whether you're going to invest in this too much. There are some other really nice tools so that you can do this really super well. Um, and they're um, the photo etch um, bending tools that you might be able to check out yourself after you've built a few of these. And if you're really keen on them, I'd suggest having a look at those because they actually make this process a lot smoother. All right, so you start with a long edge. Just folding it over. 
take your time. Now this one is a bit tricky in the sense that you're going to have to slowly bend it down because I won't be able to get my pliers. So if you can see here, if I tried to get my pliers and fold it this way, I'd be damaging the other edge. So now I'm going to have to go on the short edge of the flat nose plier and just tease it down so that I'm not causing a bend or any distortion in the other part. So this is a very basic fold, what I'm doing here. I'm just doing this very straight edge fold to give you an idea. Um, if you're wanting to do more advanced ones, so say if I was trying to bend a, a curve, what I would look at doing is I actually use drill bits. They're not ideal. It's better if it was just a um, metric rod because they come in different sizes. Um, you just have to be careful if you do use drill bits because they are sharp, they are designed to drill. But essentially what I use is drill bits so that I can wrap the metal around it to get the curves. So say if I needed to get a round wheel, I would do that in order to get the right curvature so that it would make the wheel on say, for example, the tram, I needing to bend the metal into the right shape to, to get that around. So then that has now been folded. So this here, what I've got now is actually just the base stand for uh, Morlock Speeder. Um, what I'll do now is just choose out another piece so I can show you how to fold the, the tips. So now I wanted to talk about actually attaching the different pieces. It's all very well to fold them. They all have little tabs like this and um, they will be going into little slots. So see there's one there and there. Um, now this might be a little bit easier for me because I've only got this piece to go into here. It'll get more challenging the more pieces are attached to each other. So that's when you'll start to use things like tweezers to position them properly. So the first thing I want to talk about is that when you're actually pushing these in to place, sometimes you actually have to align the tab itself. So I'm going to just do that first. The tab actually needs to point downwards. Um, and you'll adjust these as you go. The one thing I will say is that you don't want to do too many adjustments. So try and be sure because if you fold the metal too much, it will most definitely um, snap. I can see if I can try and just gently push those in, make sure all the tabs align. The tabs actually help you get it so now that's just in, I haven't actually fixed it to, I could just pull that out now. Let's just show you the underneath. You can see the tabs there. Now, one of the easiest ways to actually affix the tabs and one of the most common ways they'll get you to do it. So if it doesn't need to be in a, in a tough place, probably what they'll do is they get you to just get your, get your pliers, go over the top of them and just twist them. Now, once you've done that, that's pretty hard to undo. So be sure that you've got it in the right place. The other way of doing it, and it's probably used when you're on a seam. So sometimes if you're on a seam and you don't want it to, to damage, they'll actually get you to press it down. So you just want to gently do it. I'll try and show you that again. I'm actually putting more pressure at the tip than I am, I'm trying not to scratch like I just did, more pressure on the tip than you are on the base of it. And then once it's given away to the resistance, then you can just follow it up and push it down. So the twist one actually helps pull it closer and the tab one is genuinely used if they need to do a seam and so it's the only real way that the parts are going to fit together. The more you do of these, the better you actually get at doing these without making any marks or any damage. So this is why I suggest that you always start with a more basic type so you get familiar with the, the, the different techniques that you can use as you build up to something more impressive. So that is your essential basics. Okay, so I, I guess you didn't see me use any tweezers, but I haven't got a ma major build here to use the tweezers. Um, but if you were, if, if there were imagining more parts, something that you can use the tweezers for. So say if there was another piece on this side I couldn't access, I could get my tweezers in and just pull gently down onto a tab. So imagine that I'd be pulling on the tab. So sometimes you can't get in and so you're going to have to use tweezers, which are a little bit more difficult to, to twist things, but it's still possible. You just have to use just gently. And the reason why you would need those is if you're having to access a part that is mostly covered by other parts, because the more you build, the more you add to it, the more obscured the different parts become and the challenge and the challenge becomes there. Um, maybe in the next video, I'll be able to show you exactly how you uh, use the uh, get the curves in place but I think this is a good place to start um, and as you go um, you can build up your techniques and come up with your own ways of making sure that you fold that metal in the right way to build your model. 
So that's the basics of getting started into Metal Earth. And before you know it, you'll start building your own K2SO, your own tram, or even your own monster transformer. And remember, if you can imagine it, you can build it.